Peace be with you, from God our Father, and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. All this Lent we have been going through the Passion history according to St. Matthew. And we pick up where we left off on Friday with Matthew 28, verses 1 to 10. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first way day, day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. The women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Dear friends in Christ, Perhaps this has happened to you before. You're making your way down a long, lonely highway late at night, maybe in the middle of the night. And after watching your gas gauge go down toward empty, it's now starting to pass the E. You're beginning to lose all hope that you'll ever find a gas station, much less one that's open. And then, just when you've given up, you see a light in the distance, and as you get closer, you see that it's a neon sign that says, open. Now, I know this example hardly compares but perhaps if you've had an experience like that, you get a little idea of what it must have been like for those first disciples, men and women, who came to the tomb on Easter morning and found it open. As they looked in, they saw that the body was gone, but the tomb itself was filled, filled with comfort and hope filled with proof of the wondrous love of God to sinners. Jesus not only showed his life by giving it up on the cross, but he also showed his wondrous love by taking it back again. In the early hours of the morning, the women came to the tomb of Jesus. Like weary travelers looking for a place to refuel on a desolate stretch of highway, they were running on empty, so to speak. The one thing that they needed more than anything else, the hope of salvation in the promised Messiah, seemed now completely unobtainable. They had witnessed Jesus' enemies crush the life out of him. And with his death, their hopes had also been crushed. The Bible tells us they began to discuss amongst themselves how they were going to get into the closed tomb of Jesus. Who would roll away the stone so that they could finish anointing Jesus? Most assuredly, they were not expecting to find the tomb open. However, the Bible tells us after the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven 
and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. The tomb was open. An angel had come to roll back the stone, not to let Jesus out, but to show the world that Jesus was no longer there, but had risen from death. An empty tomb is the last thing those women expected to see. But an empty tomb is exactly what they needed to see. And that's what all the other disciples needed as well. They got more than a sign that said, open. They were met with the angels of heaven themselves, angels who brought the news, he is not here, he has risen, just as he said. Many times throughout the Bible, when God had a special revelation for his people, he sent these heavenly messengers to proclaim the news. This time, the angels had come with the most important message from heaven ever proclaimed in the entire history of the world from the beginning of time until the end. They displayed the empty tomb and announced that Jesus had risen indeed. Suddenly those weary women who had come to the tomb expecting to find it sealed with the dead body of Jesus inside instead found that it was open and Jesus was not inside. Dear Christian friends, today we have returned to the empty tomb, not expecting to find what the women at first expected, but expecting to see what the women ultimately found when they got there. We've come to the empty tomb of Jesus, the weary, the lost, the frustrated, the diseased, the weak, the discouraged, all who wander as pilgrims on this earth searching for the meaning of life and searching for relief from the trials of this life. And God beckons us to enter and receive all that we need without cost. At the empty tomb of Jesus, God says to sinners, one and all, that he has accepted the sacrifice of Jesus, which paid for the sins of the world. Every person who has ever lived or ever will live is invited to the empty tomb to be assured that Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, has now risen from death to show that God accepted the death of his only begotten son as sufficient payment for all sins and that he has attained forgiveness for the world. Jesus' resurrection is the evidence of God's wondrous love for sinners. He not only lived and died as the punishment for our sins, he proved that it was not for nothing. He proved that all his promises are true. What wondrous love Jesus demonstrated to his disciples of all times by displaying the empty tomb for all the world to see. And what wondrous love the Lord further demonstrates by now presenting the open gates of heaven for all to enter. Like a weary group of travelers, desperate for rest, who are willing to settle for any kind of shelter, but instead get a free luxury hotel with, with all the extras, so it was for those women on Easter morning carrying the grief of the crucifixion and the seeming loss of all they hoped for in a savior, these women were downhearted and discouraged. They were ready to settle for 
the anointing of the dead body of the man they had come to love and had once believed in. And then all those blessings they thought they had lost suddenly were all theirs again. In their astonishment, it took some time for it to become crystal clear. But as they were able to ponder these words of the angels and reflect on the promises Jesus had made before his death, they found everlasting joy and hope and comfort. They were able to lay down the burdens of their sin and embrace the eternal joy set before him. Because Jesus not only showed the open tomb for all the world to see, but he also opened the gates of heaven for all the world to enter. You see, that's what the resurrection of Jesus is all about. The open tomb assures us that heaven is now open to us. By rising from death, Jesus shows that the grave cannot hold us any longer. Jesus died on our behalf to take the punishment for sin and to pay its debt to God. And Jesus rose from death to assure us his heavenly Father has accepted his payment for all sins. God has forgiven the sins of the world in Christ. And all who put their faith in Jesus have God's forgiveness and enjoy his forgiveness as their own personal possession. By paying for our sins, Jesus has also freed us from the curse of sin, which is death. He promises that just as he rose from death, so too shall we. On the last day when he returns, the Lord Jesus will call forth all bodies from the grave. And what is more, Jesus even promises to those of us who are alive that even here and now through faith in him, we already have been given spiritual life instead of spiritual death. Jesus promised, I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. And he also says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. We have eternal life. We received it the moment we became children of God through faith in Jesus. We have been reborn spiritually. And this eternal life begins right here and right now, but then it lasts forever, even into eternity when someday it will also be accompanied by the physical resurrection of our bodies and we shall live with Christ body and soul forever. The angel at the tomb told the fearful women, then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. Suddenly the plan was put into motion with the first proclamation of the good news of the resurrection at the tomb, the women went on their way to begin the task that we have before us today to proclaim the message, Jesus Christ is risen indeed. The Bible tells us that the women had not even reached their destination when a wonder even greater than the empty tomb met their eyes. Matthew writes, the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. There in Galilee... 
the risen Lord met with his disciples. There he showed himself to them with many infallible proofs, as the Apostle John tells us. There he gave them the joy of Easter, which is still ours today. The wonderful breakfast we ate, the fragrance of the Easter lilies, the hymns we've waited all year to sing once again, and most of all, the message that is at the heart and center of our Christian faith. These are the pleasant memories of Easter for us all. But as one wise preacher once said, let us be sure we are living on the right side of Easter. Let's remember that Easter is not just a day we celebrate once a year and then it's gone. It is, but it is not just the culmination and climax of the church here. We live on the right side of Easter by remembering every day throughout the year that total confidence and comfort and joy and hope are ours. We will live forever. And the resurrection of Jesus proves his wondrous life, to uh, his wondrous love to us. We all are looking for something today, which is why we came here. Like those who've traveled a long distance and are desperately looking for a place to, to buy gasoline or food or, or get a motel room. We today have traveled a long road seeking hope and comfort and assurance. And therefore Jesus invites all of us as weary wanderers to come to the empty tomb. There the message for all the world to see is that the tomb is open. It is empty because Christ has risen indeed. And because he is risen, heaven's gates are open for us all. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is ours now, and what joy shall be ours in the days to come. Do not seek the living among the dead. Jesus Christ is risen, just as he said. He has gone ahead of you into heaven. There you will see him. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding will guide